And I'll just unscrew this carefully because I don't know exactly what's inside here. Is a spring gonna fly out and hit me in the eye? Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. This is my air compressor. This is a two horsepower California air tools unit that I have tucked back behind the CNC mill. And this is hooked up to piping that provides compressed air to drops all over my shop. For the most part, this compressor has been fantastic. It just sits back there in the dark and produces compressed air and it always works when I need it. But lately, it has been doing something odd. If you listen closely, you can hear it hissing. And it doesn't do this all the time. It only does this once in a while, usually right in the middle of a shot when I'm trying to talk to the camera and I get this hissing noise in the background. Now, it's doing it right now, so I pointed a camera back uh, around all of the obstructions to where it lives, and you can see on the gauges something suspicious. The pressure regulator should be set to 90 PSI, but you can see that the actual regulated pressure gauge is reading quite a bit higher than that. Let's do a little test. Let's blow off some air and see what it does. Now there's quite a bit of volume in the piping, so it's going to take a moment to rise back up. It should come right to 90 PSI and stop. And it is not stopping. It just is continuing to rise. Now it's gone, what, about 10 PSI past it, and it's slowing down, but you can see the needle is still creeping up. And if we wait a moment longer... You can hear the hissing starting again. Now, I think what's happening is there's something wrong with the regulator here. For some reason, it's not sealing properly internally, so it's not stopping at 90 PSI, and the output pressure just continues to rise. And eventually, it goes past the high set point, and the regulator starts just venting that pressure to the atmosphere. And I think that's what we're hearing. So a pressure regulator that doesn't regulate is no good. Let me dig this out and let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with it and see if we can fix it. Now for situations like this, Google is often your friend. I just searched for California Air Tools regulator leaking and the first hit is a page at their website all about air leaks. So leaking air at connections, that's not what we have. Drain valve open, nope. Air leaking from the valve. Uh, this is the check valve. That's not what we have here. Manifold regulator leaking air. Okay. And it looks like this is, uh, the model that I have. So apparently this is a thing that happens. So turn off and unplug it, drain the tank, clean the regulator, remove the regulator body from the manifold with a wrench and clean the body air piston spring and cap with WD-40. Well, that sounds pretty easy. Well, let's go take it apart and do that. Uh, I've got the air compressor out and we'll just start by taking off the knob. And that's it. It's just a knob with a stud that presses in on the valve. Take off this decorative ring. I have no idea what that ring is for. If you know, go ahead and put that down in the comments. And now we'll just unscrew the body of the valve. At least we'll try to unscrew the body. It turns out there's just not enough sticking through here. Uh, see if we can get a socket on it. Looks like 30 millimeters. I have a 30 millimeter socket, but it won't fit through the hole. So uh, we're going to have to try something else. Let's go ahead and take the whole thing apart. There's one screw in the front and two screws in brackets from the bottom. And then the whole regulator assembly will just lift right out. It's kind of a tight squeeze in here, but you can maneuver it out the bottom with the hose still connected. And we should be able to open the regulator now. And then we can get a wrench on it. And that's not actually a sealing joint, so it comes apart pretty easily. Is a spring gonna fly out and hit me in the eye? No, it looks like no. There is a little plate in there that presses on the spring and then the main spring then under that is a piston. The piston comes out and yeah, it's pretty dirty. I mean, I can't see immediately what's wrong. Let's take out the uh, pressure inlet valve in the bottom. It's all plastic and it doesn't stick up very far. So I'm being real careful not to strip it. So it's just a plastic part there with a spring and another sealing surface. You can see that's got an O-ring or something on it. 
The bottom of this is kind of dirty in there too, so it'd be nice to be able to take this whole manifold over to the bench. Let's disconnect the air hose. And it is stuck. I spent several minutes working on this. I tried some different tools and it is truly stuck. They've used some kind of sealant slash adhesive on all of these connections and it is really, really secure. I swapped out the drain valve at one point and even that was almost impossible to get out. So we'll just tighten this line back down and we'll stuff this back in here and pretend that never happened. Now over here on the bench, we can take a closer look at the parts. The knob uh, appears to just be a plastic knob with a stud in it. The housing also doesn't have any functional surfaces. There's no sealing surfaces on this, so there's just a little grease in there. We might clean it up and re-grease it, but nothing really needs to be done to that. The spring looks fine. It's just a spring for the piston. And then, of course, we have the plastic ring. And then this little piece of metal appears to just be, you know, something that was punched out of a piece of sheet. Uh, probably just a discarded part from making something else, but it's being used here as the cap so that the screw stud can press down on the spring. Now this is the high pressure air inlet valve. This is what seals off the air coming from the tank. And it's just this little piece of rubber on a spring that uh, is just pressed on there and it seals against a seat in the plastic housing. And I kind of wiped that off with my thumb already. It looks pretty clean. I don't see any damage, but the seal around the outside of this part looks a little suspect. It looks like it's been smashed and maybe extruded. I'm not really sure exactly what I'm looking at here. This doesn't even appear to be an O-ring. It appears to be, if it was an O-ring, it's smashed, but I think it's just some kind of seal that fits around this part. We need to take a closer look at that and see if I can find a replacement or something else that can fit because that doesn't look good to me at all. This is the piston and this definitely is an O-ring and aside from a bunch of kind of grit and junk that's in here, this looks to be in pretty good shape. I can pull this out, but everything here looks good. It definitely needs to be cleaned. It could very easily be leaking because of grit caught behind it or caught between it and the outer bore. But the O-ring itself looks good. I don't see any damage. This seal though, this worries me. Get little pieces hanging off of it. I have to get this cleaned up and we'll see. Now to actually clean these parts, I'm just using WD-40. As the instruction said, just spray it on there and work this around with a cotton swab. And I chose a cotton swab because it will maximize the chances of leaving lint behind and causing a new additional problem. And we all like new additional problems caused by trying to fix things. Now I looked through my O-ring selections. I've got a metric and imperial O-ring uh, set and I could not find anything that looked like this at all. In fact, looking at the mechanism, I don't think there's room for an O-ring in there. I think this is a, a seal specifically for this that fits onto this part. It cleaned up okay, and as long as I can get it back into position and keep it from extruding out, I think it's gonna seal. I mean, we'll see, but it, it looks okay to me. I'm really not sure what this is. I have not been able to find any kind of exploded parts diagram, but as long as it seals when it goes back together, it'll be fine. Now, the piston here looks really good. I don't see any damage on it. It's nice and clean. We'll just scrub out any of the grit or anything that's there. There is, you know, a bunch of, of kind of staining on the backside. I think this is just the rust preventative that's in the tank. I mean, this is what the water looks like when you drain it, but that cleans up. It's not really a functional surface anyway, but we'll get the O-ring wiped off here. Make sure there's no grit anywhere on that. That feels fine. Get that seated back into the piston and this all looks good. So I think that is ready to reinstall. Now the same thing for the high pressure seal, we'll just wipe down the surfaces. There really wasn't anything on this. It looks good. I don't see any damage. Shouldn't be an issue. The sealing surface in the bottom there looks good. And uh, so I think that's going to be fine. You can kind of see how the piston works here. When the pressure drops, the spring presses the piston down, which opens the high pressure valve and lets air in from the tank. That all looks good. We'll just go ahead and clean up the rest of these parts. These really aren't functional. They aren't sealing. They have nothing to do with the pneumatics. I'm just cleaning the grease off so we can put fresh grease on them and have a good, clean, smooth operating mechanism. 
Now this is just tri-flow synthetic grease. This is just a tube of something I had laying around. I think I bought this many years ago for lubricating the uh, linear rails for 3D printers. I think really pretty much anything will work here. Got all the parts cleaned. Let me uh, take these back over and let's go put the compressor back together and see how it works. Now back over at the compressor, I would like to clean out the body of the manifold here. I could not get it off, but uh, you can see I got a couple of C-clamps set up here to make a little makeshift shelf to hold it in position so I can see what I'm doing and you can see what I'm doing. And I'll just go in here, clean all of the functional surfaces, give them a good wipe down with a swab with WD-40 on it. This all looks pretty good. I don't see any damage on the surfaces, so... Let me grab the tray of parts and we can put this back together. We'll start by installing the high pressure inlet valve. I've got the plunger on the spring here. We'll just put it in the housing and put it down in the manifold and get the thread started. This is kind of hard to do because it's deep down in there, but if you're careful, you can get the threads lined up and then it's pretty easy to run it the rest of the way down with a socket. And once that's bottomed, we'll just uh, grab a socket wrench and go ahead and seat it. Next thing to go in here is the piston. Make sure the pointy end is down. And to work this in carefully, I don't want to tear up the O-ring on the edge of the bore. And then once that's in, motion seems nice and smooth. Seems like a nice fit. Spring goes in on top of that. And then we need to put the cap and the housing. Now. It's all going to fall apart if I just stick it on there. So I'll go ahead and assemble it in the housing and then tip this on and get the thread started on that by hand and spin that down. And then snug that with a wrench. And now we just need to put the whole housing back into the panel. Take the clamp. Yeah, that's fine. Just throw that anywhere. Yeah, that one too. Okay, we can just fish this back up inside here and route the wires or route the hoses around and get all of the screws in place. There's just the one screw through the front panel and then two screws that come up from the bottom on tabs. And once we get all of that snug down, we can go ahead and put the parts on the front of the regulator. Got the little ring that I don't know what it's for and the knob. Then let's just switch the compressor on here and make some air. Now when you switch this one on, the unloader valve leaks for a while, but you can speed up the process of it closing by plugging it for a moment, letting the tank build pressure. We'll get this up to tank pressure and set the regulator. The target pressure here is 90 PSI. And you know, these things are fiddly, so I'll play with it here a little bit, vent it, and just try to get it set as close to 90 PSI as I can. So that is gonna be close. Let's see what happens when we vent some. It's like maybe a little bit high. And that's maybe a little bit low. That, that looks pretty good. That looks like it's gonna settle right around 90 PSI. Let's let the compressor run and make sure it returns to the same point. And that looks fine to me. Okay, well, let it, let it sit for a little while. I'll bring in a timer here, set it for five minutes, and let's see what happens. And after five minutes, the needle has not moved, so, so far, so good. Well, let me get this stuff out of the way, and let's put the compressor back into its home. It normally lives back here behind the milling machine, and it's a royal pain to get it in and out, so hopefully it's fixed and we won't be digging it out again. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.